rise up and sing of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak in your brokenness complete. everybody and welcome to the faith space we're on a sunday night we're not in the same place but we're in the same time and space we're making space for faith uh good evening everyone margaret jeans with us irene alistair and sue helen bob hi bob I, your friend ian the organist at humberson says hello he said he's a friend of yours so you've got a friend bob <laughs> uh marion and i'm sure fran's on her way pat's with us ali and jenny's with us there was late last week did you did you have a note <laughs> for being late and thomas is with us as well i'm sure there might be one or two others and people will catch up as we go along well we're in the book of acts we're working our way paul's on his tour of europe now it's uh he's being thrown out of places as as Paul gets he goes in and he gets thrown out 
And now we're in chapter 17 of the book of Acts. Um, it's a tale of three cities, chapter 17. We're not going to do all chapter 17 tonight. We're going to do two cities tonight and one city next week uh, to take it all in. Uh, so it's the first, first 15 verses. Uh, let's get in the word. Let's get into the word of God. It's the one thing which will never pass away. So chapter 17. When Paul and his companions had passed through Ampilius and Apollia, they came to Thessalonica, um, and there was a Jewish synagogue. And as is custom, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had suffered to rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming... Uh, well, I've lost it. Uh, this Jesus I'm proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. But other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the, to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men have caused trouble all over the world, have now come here. And Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are defying Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bonds to let them go. And as soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. So, um, Paul, he goes through a couple of places and then he arrives to Thessalonica. That's the first one of our cities of this tale of three cities. Um, now you also have to admit these towns where he's passed through, they're about, uh, remember he'd been to Philippi, so the first one was probably about 30-ish miles to 35 miles, then it was about the same again to Apollonia, and then the same again to Thessalonica. If you remember, in Philippi, Paul had been arrested beaten with rods or whipped in some ways, got out and now he's walked a hundred miles to share the gospel. Do you know, there's just no stopping this guy, is there? Do you know what I mean? It's like, what do you have to do to stop this man? Um, it, you beat him, You, I mean, he's been stoned, he's been maybe dead, half dead. Uh, everywhere he goes, he upsets people. And, and then he just walks 100 miles. <laughs> okay, so he, he does his usual thing and he heads to the synagogue first. He reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I'm proclaiming to you is the Messiah. Paul reasoned with them to explain to them. And he reasoned with them from the scripture. I wonder when the last time any of us has just sat down with people, a non-believer, just explained the Christian faith to that um you know and you might and you might say to someone you know are you saved it might you might say a little cliche are you, have you been saved and they might say saved from what well you know we need to and we need to get to scripture arm ourselves with the scriptures because there's lots of books out there you can buy lots of books there's only one book really worth buying uh, and that's the bible uh, the best commentary on the bible is the bible and it's got, it's everything we need. And that's what Paul did. He just used the scripture. He used the scripture. He proved to them that Jesus had to die and suffer and rose again. His message was, Christ died, rose again. That was it. What was, what was Peter's message? Crucifixion, resurrection. That's it. That's the gospel message. If you think, I don't know how to share it. Well, yes, you do. Jesus died, he rose again. That's it. You know, and he says, what else does he say? This Jesus I'm proclaiming to you is the Messiah. He sit, stood in a synagogue talking to Jews. He reasons with them. He proves from the scripture. And then he proclaims. 
This man was crucified and rose on the third day, and he's the Messiah. Well, you know, that would be like, hang on, but the guy that died on the cross was the Messiah? Now, this, this is a, it's a big thing because, um, and you have to be aware, it's, it's, it's an odd one, this, that there's some Jews, and we, we probably think, well, that's, 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 this is bonkers, actually believed in two messiahs. Um, you read through the Old Testament scripture and it speaks of a, there's a conquering messiah, and it also speaks of a suffering messiah. And there's a whole sect of Judaism that believed in two messiahs. There's two of them. Um, there's Messiah Ben David, that is the Messiah who is the son of King David, um, and he's going to conquer and rule and reign. And then there's Messiah Ben Joseph. Now that is the son of Joseph. This is going, he's going to come and suffer. So there are two Messiahs. But Paul t took that analogy and said, look, you don't have two Messiahs. You've got one Messiah who's coming twice. That's the difference. And that's what he explained to them. This is one Messiah. Comes. We, we know that. We know that as Christians. But it was a bit for them because there's a whole sect of them that thought there's two of them. So uh, you have the Messiah that comes and suffers for the sin of mankind. And then you have him coming again to conquer the world, coming as king. Verse 4. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. So there's a few Jews were persuaded. OK, that's that's OK, that's good. And um, there's a large number of Greeks. That's really good. And quite a few women, you know. Now, I've got a challenge for you, actually, because a lot of you have been following through the book of uh, Acts with me for a while. If you read back to chapter nine or ten, ten probably, and read what happens in the churches when conversions happen. So we've, we've gone through all these, haven't we, over the weeks. There's a theme here that you can pick out. There's like a, a meta narrative. Every time a church is planted, women are involved. And I challenge you to find where there are no women involved in a church plant. I don't think you'll find one. I, I was going through it and I couldn't. It's, it's there every time. Verse 5. But other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob and started a riot in the city. I'm from the marketplace. Would you say I'm a bad character? I don't know. Maybe you would. So... Yeah, Paul's doing church in Thessalonica and God is doing a work and the religious people don't like it. Do you know, this is, you know, they should be the ones that understood it the most. They were the religious and they didn't get it. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's the same today. You know, I know in one, you know, you could be in one church and God's doing a work in another church, which is a totally di different denomination. And people get all a bit niffed by it. You think God wants to do a work over there. He does, you know. Um, you know, we're I'm obviously part of the Church of England. We're, we're the, the church, the institutionalized church. OK, we ain't got a monopoly on God. There's lots of my friends in the free churches and God's doing a work in them churches. And that's up to God. It's not up to us. Um, they are all, it's not all going to happen with us. And, you know, and, it, and some I know some um, religious leaders would get upset about that. I'm not because God, you know. So they've been to the local market, they've round up some bad characters, and they've got them riled up. And we know even today, it doesn't take a lot, a lot to get a mob going, does it? You know, you see it on the news, you see it on social media, uh, you see it in this country, you see it um, in America, and there's all sorts of different... It doesn't take a lot to get a mob going, really. Uh, they rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. Right. So they're doing church at Jason's house. Who's Jason? I don't know. I don't know, actually. I don't know who he is. And, you know, and if it was, and the, the, the angry mob that turned up outside, banging on the door for Paul. Now, if this was my house, I'd be like, Paul, there's somebody at the door for you. You know, I think you should go, you know. <laughs> but they don't. They don't. And, you know, Paul's not, he's not a wimp. I think they got him out. They got him out. I don't think he'd have run. I think he would have gone. Uh, but they're like, no, no, we need to look after you. So... They don't. Um, so, verse 6. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and the other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men have caused trouble all over the world and have come here now. Some versions, uh, maybe your version at home, has turned the world upside down. And I like that better, actually, because it's a, uh, you know, this is what they're saying that Paul and Silas have a reputation for turning the world upside down. 
I wish people would say that about our churches. Wouldn't that be good if they said, that church is turning the world upside down because the world's already upside down and it would be turning the right way up. I wish they'd say that about our churches. You know, they go, if you go there, your world's going to be turned, it's going to turn your world upside down. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it? You know, we're turning the world upside down. A lot of churches allows culture to influence them. And actually, we need to be influencing culture. We need to be the kind of people that after walking with the Lord, that we should be bright lights in our community. But turn it, turn it upside down. Turn it upside down. So the city is in turmoil and the crowd is after Paul and Silas. Uh, Thessalonica uh, is a city and it was resisting the word of God. Those Jewish people were resisting to the point that were angry and wanted to imprison Paul, but they couldn't find him. Verse 10, as soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were of a more noble character than those of Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. If Thessalonica, were, they'd, been, they'd resisted the word. Berea, they were receiving the word. The people of Berea received the word and they received it with readiness in mind. And they searched the scriptures daily to see that those things were so, which Paul had said. I would encourage us all, we should all be like the Bereans, right? I want, you know, do not take my word for what scripture says and what scripture means. Check it out for yourself. Don't take the word of any minister. It doesn't matter where they're from. Check it out yourself, you know? Um... I'm prone to mistakes as anybody else, you know, and and there was a time when people couldn't read uh, the scripture. They weren't allowed to read the scripture. It was in Latin and eventually it became English. But people, the, the church didn't like it. They didn't like people because they could be found out if they if they got it wrong. And they didn't like that. Um, check out God's word for you. Be like the Bereans. Be like the Bereans. Proof check, check everything. Verse 12, as a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. There's the ladies again. Yes, Marion, the ladies again. Uh, why does Paul and Luke, who's the writer of Acts, they make a thing, big thing about the women, actually. There's a lot in, there is in Luke's gospel as well. It is almost, uh, there's kind of perspective uh, from a female point of view. And in Luke, and Acts carries on that. Why? Because the Jews at the time would never mention the ladies. They wouldn't make a big thing of it. So actually, this is why it's kind of hammered home. There's, there's women involved all the way. It's a big thing in the early church. They want to they wanna make sure pe the listeners understand that actually, you know, this is big. It's important because the gospel of Jesus Christ is neither male nor female. It's neither Jew nor Greek. In the cross, we're all equal. We're all the same. There's no different, really, in God's eyes. Amen to that. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. let's uh let's be like the bereans i you know i pray that we are going to be like the bereans receive the word of god be receiving of it and check it out check it out get into god's word and check it out be like the bereans i pray we are see you all soon stay saved remember hands faith space god bless you all See you soon. Oh, Pam's on in the morning. Apple State, nearly forgot to say. Tune in to Pam. Um, Tom and Wendy, one check, 7 p.m. on Facebook on Tuesday night. Fought for the day, Thursday. And Pam will be back at half eight. I'm going to be at Laceby at 19.30 next Sunday morning. Uh, see my friends at Laceby, which will be really good. And then I'll be here again at 6 p.m. for the Faith Space. Okay. See you all soon. Bless you.